This is Women's Leadership Success, episode number 115. Do you know that most leaders don't know how their team or customers perceive them? Why? Because they don't ask. Or if they do ask, do they actually listen or even understand the actions they need to take? So here's an important leadership secret. Great leaders develop in themselves and their team's culture active listening leadership skills. If you want to be more successful as a leader by deepening your relationships at work, profoundly change the results you get, be happier and make more money, then join me as I share the active listening skills of top leaders. Also, be sure to listen to the end of the show for simple and easy ways you too can get involved in helping yourself and more women lead and succeed. Welcome to Women's Leadership Podcast, showing you how to influence people, improve your performance, and advance your career. Brought to you by women's leadership and career expert Sabrina Brom and women's leadership success.com. Here's your chance to meet women trendsetters leading the way to success, accomplishment, and balance in business and life, no matter if you're a manager, CEO, or entrepreneur. Join Sabrina for coaching and no-nonsense advice to improve your career and bottom line. Good day. This is Sabrina Brahm with Women's Leadership Success. Dot com radio, and I'm so excited to be with you today to be talking about great tips that I've learned from leaders in corporations. Now, there's a big problem, and that is that most, many leaders don't know how to find out how the people that they that work for them feel about them or how their customers feel about them. And this is really a problem with how they listen and how they take in information. So we're going to give you some ideas today that will help you to improve your listening ability and also the other people around you at your work. Um, And to help me do that, I'm going to be interviewed by the co-founder of Women's Leadership Success and the producer of Women's Leadership Success, Success, and one of the most incredible men on the planet who is a big proponent of women's equity and does a lot of things to help women uh, get parity in the workplace. And I'm very um, honored to say he happens to be my husband, too. So welcome, Tim. So glad to have you on the program today. Thank you, Sabrina. Well, it's it's fun that uh, even after 29 years of adventures together and marriage and uh, 114 shows and all the things we've done, I still get a little red and uh, giddy about uh, what you just shared about me. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Well, uh, it's a, it's a, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, this conversation really started based on an article that you wrote and published in LinkedIn recently about active listening. And uh, there were such great stories in there based on real life uh, consulting and coaching you were doing in companies. And when I read the article, I was kind of shocked about some of the high level problems that were happening uh, as far as people's inability to listen. That I said, you know, we really should we should have you as the guest. Let me interview you. So let's get right into it. So. Listening is a big issue in, in companies, and you know, why don't we why don't we get right into some of the the real life um, stories that you've got to share about what you've experienced and how you've helped people um, transcend this problem. Um. Okay, I also I just want to back up a little bit and say that you know it's something that we've talked about before in a lot of other shows, but. Listening is really a challenge for us all because we don't have a lot of training in it. We we do before the age of five. That's the main way we learn. And then after that, when we start school, we, we stop listening um, and we start having to say things or learn things or read things. And we don't spend a lot of time developing the ability to really hear what the other person's saying to us. 
And I've got some examples of that. And I'm also going to share something that just happened an hour ago that was another example of, of this situation. But a couple of years ago, I had a man named George, I'm the made up names, of course, who um, did a 360. That's an, a, an assessment where you ask everybody in your department. He was a vice president, so he was asking a lot of people how he was doing. And what he found out was he was not well liked. People did not think he was doing a good job. And um, they gave him pretty low scores. Um, he was pretty devastated because he was really dedicated to his job. He worked long hours, you know, like so many people today. He was working 70, 80, 80 hours a week and really kept his head to the grindstone. He just worked all the time. But he did not have the pulse of his people. He did not know what they thought about him. He did not really even consider that. He was thinking, as long as I do a really good job and I, I get things done, that's enough. But he didn't know the importance of really connecting with the people and how that would even change the results he was getting. Now, George was, he was pretty shy. He was a, an introvert and um, he wasn't sure about how to go about changing this perception. What, because George uh, was not even aware that he was perceived this way and he wasn't really connecting with his team, what were some of the negative impl implications to the company that he was, he was a high level person in this company, what were some of the negative impacts that were happening in his company and division? Well, for one thing, he was, he wasn't finding out what a lot of the issues or problems were that people were having <clears throat> because he wasn't really checking with them to find that out. And um, even when people brought up issues, many times he overrode them, not understanding that there was something he needed to find out from them at that time. Um, it also was affecting the morale of, of the people that worked for him and affecting retention. And as you know, right now we have this problem called the big resignation where people are leaving companies. And part of that is because people don't feel connected to other people in a company, don't feel like anybody cares about them. And that's a really important thing, much more important than we used to think in terms of leadership. I have the advantage of having read the article and know a little bit <laughs> on, the, on the background of, of George. And um, but I was I was um, uh, surprised and impressed with how you started to help George turn around. And it was really quite a simple thing, but had such a profound impact. So mm -hmm. if to tell us what you started with George. OK, so the thing I had George do to begin with, which was actually took us some time to get him to do this, and that was to go to each person and he started with he started with five people that he felt really safe with so this is not the kind of thing when you're learning a new skill you've got to make it safe for yourself and comfortable and the thing i had him ask them was how am i doing on a 1 to 10 with 10 being the best 1 being the worst how am i doing what what am i doing okay what do i need to improve uh, what do i need to stop doing what do i need to change uh, people were very reluctant to give him this information. Um, so they tended to want to kind of gloss over it and act like everything's fine, everything's okay. And he continued to press them for answers. And then they were somewhat surprised by a couple things that happened. One was he listened to what they said and he asked for more information. And then he said, could I check with you next month and find out how you're doing? How I'm, excuse me, how I'm doing. That's a super powerful thing to ask people because it 
not only it gets their um, the part of their brain called the reticular activator, that part of the brain that starts paying attention, it gets them noticing what he's doing. And they're more likely to notice him or you what you're doing better or the changes you're making, especially if you go back and ask. Now, the problem is most people don't go back and ask. They'll ask, well, how am I doing? What do I need to do? But they never ask again. And so people, I was coaching a lot of people in this company. So people said to me, wow, I was really shocked because George came back a month later and he said, so I've been working on uh, asking questions or doing these certain things. How am I doing in that area? And then he would stop and wait, listen for what they said and say, okay, thank you, leave, and then come back again the next month and ask the same question. Well, after a few months of doing this, what they realized was George really wanted to know the answers to these questions, and he was willing to do the work to make this happen. Well, besides him having his own insight as to how he could do his job better, was he also asking what can he do to better serve his internal customers, his staff? And was that part of it um, to better create that connectivity and um, teamwork? Yeah, he was asking, how am I doing as your boss, as the vice president of the company? How am I doing? So it was definitely around how he was doing in his job. Okay. But part of what happened was, as he kept doing it, he started getting more and more information that was useful. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I thought was interesting about, I guess it was about two months ago, they found the uh, Endeavor, Endeavor, which is the Ernest Shackleton's ship that sunk in Antarctica. And, you know, it was the ship had was getting ready to do this big trek across Antarctica when the ship got stuck on an ice flow and ended up being there 20 months. And it's an interesting thing that you can Google it and look it up, but Ernest Shackleton in 1905 was doing this very same thing. He was asking people, how am I doing? What do you think I should do differently? He was getting information from every single person on that ship. And it made a huge difference in the outcome, 20 months on that ice flow with limited food, with no way to contact anybody. There were no cell phones. There was no radio. There was no way to get a hold of anybody. And people wrote in their journals, it was the best year of their life because they were listened to. They got to participate in things. They got to really um, develop themselves because he was listening and continually improving what was going on for these people. And so it, ha it happened 1905, it's not brand new, but it's something that we need to keep developing, to keep doing. So let's, let's fast forward a little bit on George and, the yeah. co and his company, his team. You work with him for a while. As you mentioned, you also worked with uh, many of his uh, fellow executives uh, that were part of his team. What were some of the, um, positive outcomes uh, as the the more active listening was became more and more part of not only George, but that divisional culture. Well, it turns it turns out that for a company to be really successful, it has to have a group intelligence. And that means that the the whole is more intelligent than the individual parts. And so what began to happen was the interaction with each other started helping people to be more innovative, more creative, have more psychological safety where they felt like they could speak up and say what they needed to say. And they were able to bring up not only their opinions or ideas on things, but to point out some very simple things that could change that would really help the company be more successful. So as George did this and developed more a rapport and connection with people, people felt more empowered to speak up and share things. And the whole culture began to change. Morale improved, uh, retention increased, turnover went down, uh, safety increased. 
um, just a lot of things changed because he was doing this. Okay. And he also modeled this for other people. So it began, not only did George do it, but what he found was his directors, his managers, his supervisors started doing the same thing. What, what about his... Um... What about his his superiors? What did they notice, and what ha- and what and uh, how did that impact George's career? What what happened? His superiors started noticing that he was getting better results in his division than they were getting in the other divisions, and started asking him what he was doing, mm-hmm. so they could begin to do it in their divisions too. And and uh, what, what didn't. Wasn't that did George end up getting promoted? Um, he yes, he did. He did get promoted. He got promoted to um, a higher level of of vice president, but he kept kept doing the same things and actually implemented other areas of the company. Cool. Let's 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 transition from George to the listeners. So imagine. Um, you have a George in your company, or maybe you're you are George, or you're Georgia, and uh, <laughs> uh, you you feel like you're doing your job well, and you got your head to the the grindstone. And but um, maybe things feel a little stuck, or you 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 realize that you you do need, need to develop your active listening skills. So what what can that George or Georgia George or Georgia do <laughs> to start developing? Um, their 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 own active listening skills. Yeah, you know, I think one of the one of the problems is um, for many companies, you're you're tracking what you're doing all the time, and how do you bill that? How do you bill for listening? You know, so some in some companies that's a problem. I'm not I'm not doing anything. I'm just listening. So part of the problem is just actually taking the time to. Um, Deciding and making a commitment that you're going to, on a regular basis, have conversations with the people that work for you and find out what they're doing and how they're doing. Um, And to do this not only on a one-to-one level, but also do it in meetings. One of the interesting studies, it's it's probably about five or six years old now, is the Google Aristotle Project. And Google ran did all kinds of research on all the teams they had and what made the top highest performing teams. It had nothing to do with specifically who was on the team or the teams that had the most intelligent people. It had to do with the teams that cooperated the best. And um, hold on just a second. I got it. Shut this off. Um, It had to do with the teams that were, had the best group intelligence. And how did they get the group intelligence? One, they had psychological safety. The other is over, say, a month period, everybody in the group talked as much as everybody else. And what that means if you have six people on a team and everybody's talking equally, that means everybody else has to be listening. So everyone has a chance to share their opinions and everyone gets listened to. And if you think about the meetings that you're in in your company, I bet that's not what's happening a lot. I bet there's people that are just dominating the conversation, um, interrupting other people when they're trying to say something. And the bottom line is that's not going to get you the the profits, the innovation, the creativity, the group intelligence that's really going to lead your company to be a a cutting edge company. So you want to listen not only individually, but you want to really practice in a group that everybody is listened to equally. Do you want to optimize your career, your leadership, your life to move to a more successful and powerful level? Would you like to help other women worldwide just like you have more influence, confidence, and success? Then here are three things you should do now. First, go to careerdevelopmentquiz.com for a free gift from me. 
a quick and easy career and leadership assessment you can complete in just three minutes. And when you get done, I'll send you your score right away, plus some suggestions you may want to focus on that are the secrets of top leaders. You may even qualify for a free coaching session with me just for taking this quick self-assessment. Second, here's how to help more women worldwide just like you become more powerful leaders. You can do this by spreading the word about Women's Leadership Success podcast in your social media and by giving this show a great review in Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, CastBox, Podchaser, or Podcast Addict. Plus, this really helps me too, and the show. I really appreciate it. Third, follow me on LinkedIn to get additional tips, articles, and other resources that will help you be successful. Well, along the lines of, I definitely get that there's certain people who tend to dominate uh, conversations and others that will just sit back and listen. Um, thinking from a perspective of a kind of a company-wide culture, it, it's it's not something that companies actually integrate as far as um, training or making it part of the company culture is, is this concept of active listening. So what, what do you think holds a company back from integrating um, active listening into their, especially their leadership? Um, I think most that it's in a way it's so simple, it's overlooked and, um, and they don't know that it's, that it's an issue. So that that's really a problem that people don't realize is, is an issue. Mm -hmm. What are the um, examples that in your story that's in LinkedIn and, and it's actually on women's leadership success.com under articles uh, on active listening was uh, I got a kick out of was the, the story about Sam Walton uh -huh. uh, and it was so, so profound and so simple. Uh, why don't you share that? Okay. Well, Sam Walton, when he started Walmart, uh, and Walmart began to take off. So there were several different stores every morning about four 30 in the morning, he would go to the, um, shipping center where all the truck drivers were waiting to deliver, to get their trucks loaded and deliver all the equipment to the other stores. And he would take in a box of donuts and he would sit down, everybody have a donut and some coffee. And he would just ask them, so what's, tell me what's going on in the stores you're delivering to. And because he did this every single morning, he was getting information right as stuff was happening. Some, one of the stores, maybe a supervisor was yelling at people or the delivery was slow because uh, people weren't paying attention to a certain thing. Or this other store was really great because they had such great customer service and the the manager was so kind and had gone out of his way to do certain things. He got so much information and was one of the main reasons that Walmart took off was because he had this great uh, ability to listen and to follow up on that. And you might be saying, well, Walmart's had some problems and that's true, but Sam Walton, to begin with, had some really good ideas of how to find out information that really helped his company. You know, one one of the things that we're focusing here on, if you're in a company or you're you're leading a team, but when I when you and I started talking about this top this topic for the show, it occurred to me my background is in B two B tourism, and. You know, we talk about being a customer service business, it's a hospitality business, but everything that we're talking about applies to uh, your customers too. And you know, I think I think that we would be remiss if we didn't bring to bear that the same intention. In fact, I think people tend to listen might be more apt to ask questions and listen to their customers than their team. Um, and I think it's it's important to, that that that. Um, there's equal energy and devotion to listening 
not only your customers, but to your, your team members. Um, so, and I think the other thing that you mentioned about Sam and, and also with George is, is that not only did George ask questions and Sam ask questions, but they list, they listened and they took action. Um, and, you know, that's got to have a, just a profound impact on, on culture. And that was the other thing I wanted to come back, circle around to is, is that when you were working with George and the team, you helped shift the culture uh, to one that was where active listening, asking and listening and taking action was part of it. Um, what what were some of the other things that you kind of wrap up on George and what you did there um, to help really improve, shift the culture? Well, you know, as an executive coach and consultant, one of the one of the talents I have is I'm able to listen to people. Um, and when I go into a company, one of the first things I do is ask to have a conversation with all the different people that I'm going to be working with, and sometimes even the people that work for them. And in almost every instant, instance, I find something that I can help them to improve or a way that they can do something that really helps them. And Usually they're very surprised that I've helped them, even though I'm only going to be talking to them for an hour. Um, but it's because I listen and I'm able to find out what they need, what they want, or what what would really help them to succeed in their job. And so, um, and that's what I teach the managers, the directors, the um, vice presidents, and even the presidents of companies to do is really pay attention and learn from each other so that they can improve their companies. About two hours ago, I had a conversation with somebody that I had um, found on LinkedIn that I thought could be a really good referral source for some of the people I work with. He looked really well qualified. I'm not going to say what area this person worked in. I scheduled a time to talk to him on the phone, got him on the phone, and this person um, said, oh, well, I don't remember why we're talking. And, oh, I don't really have very long. I only have 20 minutes. I said, okay, well, I'll take 20 minutes. And here's what I would like to know about. He answered uh, the questions I had in very, um, you know, like very clipped ways. Never asked me a question never asked me what it was that I was looking for or wanting. And um, I could have referred this person a lot of business. And I'm not going to refer any business to this man because he he didn't listen. He, he didn't develop rapport with me. I mean, really, listening is helping the other person feel felt, helping the other person feel like they're not invisible. Which, you know, right now is even more important than it was two years ago. With COVID, with all the things we've had going on, we have remote work happening. We have people that are on their Zoom calls. They feel even more disconnected from their companies, from each other. It's important for us to listen and to find out what people want and what they need. I have had several people call me and say, oh, I've got this problem with my boss, or I want to do this, want to do that. And we'll talk about what they need to do. And then they tell me, okay, I'm going to do that. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to send them an email. Well, if you have a problem with somebody and you need to clarify that, you need to work it out, do not send an email. Don't send a letter. Don't send an email. You either need to get on a, a meeting call with them on Zoom. You need to pick up the phone and call them. Um, if you're going to go into the office in person, have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. You need to have some way that you have a dialogue with people. The whole Zoom thing, all we've been going through, we're, we're re remote. We're losing the ability to dialogue. We need to have conversations, not monologues. 
Indeed, indeed. So I'm I'm going to, folks, I'm going to brag on Sabrina a little bit because um, over the years I've had the opportunity to um, observe so much of your um, executive coaching and consulting. And one of in and one of your superpowers is when you work in a, a company and you work with a team, you are you have an excellent ability to um, ask deep questions, listen and develop rapport. And what I've seen, you've had profound and make profound uh, beneficial movement in companies because you're you're not only working with all these individuals and helping them individually, but you're able to synthesize information and um, help bridge gaps uh, that might exist, especially um, uh, in large teams or even in where, between different divisions. Um, and I think that that is a, an amazing superpower uh, that you have. And um, I know that you love doing it. And it's almost as like you're a grandmaster chess player <laughs> and helping uh, people uh, tap into their natural strengths, um, helping create more rapport with teams, um, helping uh, people f- uh, f- uh, have buy-in and uh, working towards a, a new objective or um, uh, really tightening up a key metric. So, you know, it's, it's, and it becomes, and it's really all about your ability to improve communication um, by asking questions and listening and helping people implement this in their company. So um, anyway, I just had to brag on you a little oh, bit. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And that's what I'm excited about. It's what I really love doing. And I'm also at the same time modeling the behavior because the things that I am good at doing in companies, it's something that people can learn how to do. It's not something that um, I came out of uh, my mother's womb and was instantly able to do. I think that's something that I know when I was younger and had not didn't do very well in school and had a, had had a lot of failures. I thought there were just people that just magically were confident that they just were really good at doing these things. And certainly there's some people it's easier for than others, but it's something we can all learn. And it just requires us breaking it down into small enough pieces, practicing those pieces, and then moving on to the next the next thing. I just had a conversation with somebody a few days ago where they said that they were very intimidated when somebody was aggressive or trying to kind of um, uh, dominate them in terms of a conversation or an outcome. And as we talked about it, and I was giving him ideas, the it seemed he was surprised to hear that he didn't have to learn it all at once. And I really want people to know that are listening to this, that you are capable of learning how to listen and how to communicate better. And all you have to do is take a little piece of this and put it into action and implement it and keep doing that. And it will change things and you will improve. It's important. And I'm so honored and pleased that you're listening to this show and you're listening to the ideas we're saying. And it's even more important that you take some of these ideas and you start putting them into action. And you know, you don't have to wait till you go to work tomorrow. You can do it tonight with your partner. You can do it with a child. Maybe you have a child that lives in your house. Instead of asking your partner, your child, something about did they get the chores done and did they get the bills paid? Ask them something about their day or what happened to them or what was important to them. Um, Sometimes people are actually surprised by that. Uh, I've asked people more than once in companies and even personally, what are you celebrating today? That is a mind-blowing question as opposed to what's, what's wrong with what happened today. What are you celebrating? What what happened that made you really feel good? What did what did you like that happened today? So take the shows that we've put up, take the ideas that you're hearing, the ideas that where you want to keep improving yourself, and 
just take one small thing and practice them. And also at Women's Leadership Success, um, at the end of each show, we have a special section. It's called um, Action for Traction, which gives you three ideas that you can implement and change things that you can look at. And there's also a wonderful online free quiz you can take called careerdevelopmentquiz.com that will give you an idea of where you're standing in your leadership development and how you can continue to improve it. And if your score is at a certain level, you could qualify for a free session with me too. Um, and we have great articles on um, women's leadership success and also sabrinabrom.com that can be helpful to you too. I want to add something about the career development quiz, uh, com is that um, not only is it free, but um, you've done a great job at, at defining five key areas of, of, of that makes helps people be great leaders. And it's a self-assessment. It's, confidential and literally you can do this in about four minutes um yeah. and it's neat because it immediately is going to give you um, a score uh, where you, and where you scored in those five key areas and then your collective score and i think uh you get you would find it super helpful to create a baseline for where you're at now and you know the neat thing is is that we've made this available to you and you know so you can come back um and three months, six months and do it again. And as Sabrina said, you know, your I, your commitment, Sabrina, is, is to help women and men um, advance their leadership, their influence, their careers, their income. Um, and it, as you said, this, this is something that you've learned and you're, you're, you're a great teacher. And, and really the, you've always had a, a um, we've always had a bigger vision uh, about the, the, why we do women's leadership. And, um, I, I thought that it would be helpful for people to really for you. I'd like to hear you share your grant, your greater vision for the listeners and the viewers of this and what, what, what you hope for, um, for women's leadership success and why, why are you a culture consultant and, and really focusing on women's leadership? Well, I have a real passion for, women reaching their potential, having equity at work, um, and really being successful in their careers and being really happy with their lives and changing the lives of other women, other girls, the people around them, the men too. It's a real passion of mine. It's why we've been doing the show for 10 years. And so that passion is is what, why I do this show. It's what keeps me excited about life and continually learning how I can help people to reach their potential. And I'm going to give the, the, uh, the male's perspective on that too, is that um, I, I am so often embarrassed about what men do with their leadership. And I think that women bring such a, a wonderful perspective to the business world and life. And frankly, men have been screwing it up for a long time. And we need more women uh, in positions of power and in government, in boards, leading companies to help and to bring more balance um, of energy and, and how we approach things. So um, that's why I'm I'm such a huge advocate, not of course of you, but also <laughs> uh, there's this vision and uh, to make the world a better place. So how can how can uh, women and, and men, how can they help participate in this vision of of more gender equity, more equality, more influence? What can they do? OK, well, first off, I, I just I not only do I love my husband, but I love men and I don't see them as um I, th I, I want to join with men to change the world and we need men to get equity. So we need men to join us and be our partners in this. It's the only way we're going to change things. So look for men that can be allies to you at work, 
um, at home and your family, it's super important that the men are our allies. Um, and I just, I just want to impress upon everybody that we can change things. We can change what's happening. Um, I want to thank you for interviewing me today and thank all the listeners. And um, let's just end this for now and look forward to talking to you again on another subject, Tim. Well, I appreciate that. But as a, as a co-founder and marketer, I have to throw out a little an additional little plug, how, how people can participate in this shared vision. What can they do to help you amplify this message out there okay. and uh, and um so i'm gonna just do a quick laundry list one they can follow you on linkedin sabrina you're putting out great posts and articles um we want to hear from you we want to know what are your topics what are you interested in what would be helpful to you we mm -hmm. want to listen and 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 provide you what uh you're interested in right um, and I, I just want to make a comment there because you know i read the the books and i really vet the people that are on the show and there's so many different subjects that we could talk about. I really need your input. If you tell me, hey, I really, really want to find out about X, if I get enough people, then I'm going to find an expert on that and have them on the show. Yeah. And, and you know, frankly, we're getting pitched all the time on different things, but we, we truly, uh, the primary one of the primary decision making is is the is the topic in alignment with what's going to help you. Um, so follow Sabrina. You meaning all, everybody everybody that's listening? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You you out there. <laughs> you, you know who right. you are. The um, yeah. also the as part of the vision. Uh, let's flight. Let's face it. iTunes is a huge influence. It's the number one vehicle for people that uh, listen to podcasts. And uh, the more reviews that we have, the higher our ranking, and the more women just like you will find this show and say, wow, this is this is helpful. So this is a way for you to, if you believe in, in women empowerment and women leadership, help us help you and help other women out around the world. So give us a great review in iTunes and don't wait. Just It's so easy. Just go do it. Um, I, and just a couple of things, Sabrina is available for coaching and consulting. Um, you know, if, if you have, if you're wondering if you've ever thought about hiring a coach, go read some of the re, uh, recommendations that other people just like you have given Sabrina about the work that she's done. Uh, and I think you're going to see for yourself that the depth of her experience um, and her holistic results on improving um, the bottom line and moving you forward are, are phenomenal. Um, and um, also, if you have a friend or a company that would uh, might benefit from Sabrina's coaching or the podcast, refer us. And a couple other things. Um, if you have a guest that you think would be awesome for the show, not only give us a topic, but if there's a particular um, expert out there that you think would be excellent, great. We want to hear that. And um, and then in, in just closing, um, we're thinking about putting together a listener's survey. So uh, we haven't put it together yet, but look for it in the future. Uh, in, in LinkedIn, we'll probably put out a survey there, or if you're on our email news uh, list um, there, or we'll have it in WLS um, show notes. Um, anyway, that's it. Thanks for letting me put, put out my plug. And, uh, and um, thank you all for being a listeners, um, sharing, and uh, we want to hear from you. Thank you, and bye for now. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening today. I really appreciate you sharing this podcast and social media and giving me a review in your favorite podcast platform. Also, be sure to follow me on LinkedIn to get even more free tips to help you succeed. And don't forget, if you're ready to take your leadership, your team, or even your whole company to a new level of engagement, success, and profits, and you need a top expert with decades of coaching, consulting, and training experience, I'm your best choice. Contact me today via messaging in LinkedIn, womensleadershipsuccess.com, or sabrinabrom.com. Thanks for listening. Thank you for joining your host, Sabrina Brom, on another Women's Leadership Podcast. If you have questions or comments, you can email her at sabrina at sabrinabrom.com. 
Since 1989, Sabrina and her team have helped hundreds of women managers, business leaders, and entrepreneurs with valuable trainings, articles, books, and executive coaching. For additional tips, interviews, and free access to Great Leaders Today mini-course, visit www.womensleadershipsuccess.com.